Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Super Coach Challenges and we are at the round five review. And it was a good week of scoring this week. We finally made that 2,000 point mark, all thanks to the uh, addition of our second premium player this year. We've gone two from two pretty good picks for the premium so far. Uh, a great week by Sean Darcy, um, who um, actually wasn't the original plan but we'll get to why i changed that in a sec when we get into the team but we scored 2018 which is our highest score yet so very happy with that i think it was what 80 points maybe better than last week which was our previous high score so happy with that um and that's off of a lower uh captaincy score as well so that's quite nice um up to 9200 so uh 50 k's Fair way off, 1,300 points. But you know what? We're going to make 100K. I'll tell you that now. We've gone up another 2,822 spots. We're in a very good spot for trades as well. You know, 29 trades, probably a little bit more ahead. And we're going to slowly start upgrading this team and catching some of these bloody points up. Um, and, you know, 2018 was a decent score for what we've got in this team. You know, uh, I think... 24 was about the highest, so, you know, well, long way off the top 10,000. But, um, you know what? I'm happy with 2,000. Score keeps going up. The primos we have picked have delivered so far, and we're getting some, getting some good cash gen out of this team. So let's see what we can do now, and let's keep building on the way to the end of the year and to hopefully top 50K. But that is probably a way off now. It's going to be a long climb back, and we're probably going to keep losing points for the next few weeks. Um, but then after that, we might be able to start doing a few things. Um, there's a couple of these rookies who are well, lower price players who are looking like they're going to be kept as keepers, which is great. Less trades for us to use. And there's a couple interesting rookies. Um, DPP changes also happened this week, causing a few different things to happen. And um, it's actually going to be quite a dilemma to try and pick who we're going to get this week because there's a lot of players um, that put their hands up last week. Uh, Lockie Neal, Toot Miller, uh, Jordan Dawson's obviously there. Would have had them in a heartbeat in this team. But um, anyway, uh, if, if price was probably available um, and if there weren't better things at lower prices, I guess, uh, what else have we got? Um, Tom Short had a good game. Uh, I already said Lockie Neal, but uh, Laird had a good game. There was a lot of those players who kind of dropped back a bit. Had a really good game. And there's obviously Cat Clary there as well, who should not have scored the score he scored. Uh, the fact that Essendon let us all down and let him have 21 disposals or something in the last quarter is really, really annoying. Um, it would be nice to see Clary owners get punished for once. For that 700k player but you know that's the game and it's a it's annoying that he got 20 disposals in junk time and when the game was over but we deal with that and we move forward because um, it would have been nice to get him nice and cheap because i think if he had a 60 or 70 he would have been dropping 50k very quickly um and he has got a very nice run coming up which makes him hard not to pick up anyway let's get into the team all right so nick dacos doing what nick dacos does Another 40 disposal game, or was, was actually his first 42 disposal game, I believe he got, um, which is great. Just don't have to talk about this guy. Everyone's got him. Leave him there. Let him keep scoring. Um, and I think Collingwood have a very nice run coming up, which is very helpful for us. Uh, Weedering, now he's probably one we might look at training out this week. Uh, that 61 is not going to help his cash gen. And uh, I've looked in all sorts against the Crows. Uh, and his defense, it made it hard for him because he was just getting absolutely fired against. Uh, but looking at the round of matchups, St. Kilda wouldn't be horrible because they have quite a young forward line. Uh, then you've got West Coast, Brisbane's hard, Dogs is probably hard, and then Collingwood. So we'll have a look at that a little later on. Um, then we got Mitchie Hinge, old Hinge, uh, 94. He looked really nice for that back line. He was playing the role I kind of thought he might play for the Crows with uh Dawson getting more mid-time I thought that it looked like Kinge might get more kickouts which he was and he's kind of that guy who kind of plays off the back a bit when they switch which is nice a little bit of the quarterback role um and he scored quite well uh if only he could go these 90s every week um but 
it kind of does depend on the uh, matchup, really. And he had quite a nice matchup against Calden with, I think he was playing on uh, that uh, Motlop. So, who um, isn't the most damaging player. You can kind of let him run around on his a little bit, which was why Hinge was able to get a few more kicks. Um, but it's just nice to see. Uh, Hunter Clark just had an average game. Uh, probably a little bit hard against Collingwood, but I feel like um, he kind of got burnt a little bit as well. Jim B was an early sub. Um, his cash gen has just been absolutely killed now. And I think a lot of people are going to trade him out, which is really annoying because he hasn't even made 150k. And I don't know whether we want to really do it in this team, um, but it might be something we have to. Um, McKenna also had a bit of a down game against North. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Because Mount Barker was actually supposed to be quite similar to the MCG. Um, so I'm a bit surprised by that. Maybe, maybe he just wasn't getting on the spread as much. He didn't look like he was in and around the ball as much as he normally is or getting that link up. He was on like zero after the first quarter. I hadn't even touched it. Um, it was a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, hopefully he picks up again. His break even's at 25, so not much to worry about yet. But we would like another big score next week of around 80 to keep him going. Um, Will Day obviously out and then Constable also out. But he has been lighting up the VFO, I'm pretty sure. So hopefully he keeps going. Um, the other one we could look at is Alex Shinkata. It looks like he's had two 35-plus games in a row in the VFL and could be looking at a bit of a call-up. So at 102k, he's a very tasty-looking player for a Jimby downgrade. Um, and looking at setup build, he kind of got the tag roll on uh, Oliver and did really, really well, um, but let him off in the last, uh, last quarter, which was a bit annoying. Uh, what else can you do with that? Um, it was very annoying for not owners because we finally thought you might be getting that uh, score we were looking for, but uh, kind of uh, to roll back his pricing, but we did not get that. So uh, that's just something we have to deal with. Uh, Hunter, uh, to be honest, I'm surprised he scored this much. Um, he did look like he was getting a bit of it, but it looked very rushed. So not great, but uh, that, that happens. Um, Hopper, good game. I actually didn't notice him that much. I went to the Sydney Richmond game because I am from Adelaide. And uh, I actually didn't notice him as much. He must have been just getting a lot of that inside ball. Uh, me and my mate were just cheering on Samson Ryan the whole time because we wanted to get a big score. Um, and he didn't, didn't quite get there, but he, there were some good signs, I guess. Um, Horn Francis was monumental in the last quarter. I think he was on like 25 and I was thinking, oh God, Jason. And then the last quarter he had like 11 or 12 disposals and really like showed why he was such a highly touted player in his draft year. Uh, rip, ripped open that, that game for Port and hit um, Todd Marshall on the chest uh, in, the, in that... Uh, pocket where he kicked that goal from and he just looked very nice around the uh around the stoppage just like when a game gets on the line Horn Francis has stood up and that's really good for Port supporters. Uh Lockie Ash just had a thereabouts game. Not much to talk about there. Jimmy Warp will come back with a hundred but no day, no McKenzie really. Um we'll get onto that later. Um no day in the midfield that Warpool kind of had cruise control and he really played well. A hundred really kick starts that cash again. Um, I, I'm pretty sure quite a few dropped in last week. Yeah, so he's down to 13%, 13%. With 100, his break even's going back to 32. He's looking at a 24K rise again next week, which is really, really nice. Um, and in a year where cash generation is a little bit hard, it's really nice that Warple got that 100 last week. Uh, Wangan Imbalira, uh, just kind of his same old as well. He's got the defense DPP now, which is nice. Same as Ash. Um, but whether we look to move him on, I'm not sure yet. He did look to be around the ball a bit more. Maybe he's starting to get a bit comfortable this year, which is good. But, uh, we need a bit more from him. Will Day's also got the mid defender DPP, which is nice because we got some switching options now through our midfield as well. 
especially when he's back. Um, Cam uh, Ashcroft had a good game. Mount Barker. Um, this is probably the first time he was in Adelaide, I think. Uh, oh, no, he was in the first round where uh, Port beat Brisbane in that last half. Um, but he's just got his cash keeping on going. Not much to say there. Uh, McKenzie, this is just annoying. This is why the sub is annoying. And I wish there was some sort of mechanic that makes it on time of ground in Supercoach because the sub's just wrecking any chance of cash generation we have in this game. Only told for subs. It should just be for subs. Because McKenzie was listed out as managed and then Hawthorne decided to play him as a sub. So if you're going to manage him, then why are you putting him as sub? What's the point? It's, you know, there could be an injury at the start of the game and then McKenzie's back in anyway. So what's the point? Why not just play him in the game and not manage him? You're not managing him by playing him as sub because there's every opportunity he comes on and if he's not warm, then he could injure himself anyway. The whole point of managing is resting the player so that they can come back the next week and play well. And the fact that Hawthorne said they dropped in to manage him but then play him as sub just doesn't make sense because you're not managing the player. That's, I mean, maybe managing game time, they're getting less game time, but what's the point then? Just let him play. It's a little bit of a rant there. Um, Oscar Baker had a bit of an average match. It was a wet match, uh, so can't really say much. 53 is all right. I think it keeps his cash going. Uh, break even is 46 now, but he's got Fremantle, who are a little bit of a hard, uh, an easier matchup, so that would be good. And Sean Darcy, the big man, uh, we VC'd and took the loop on him. Um, there was a couple of reasons why. So um, I looked at the field in general and I went, me, it looks like looking at the field, that Ruck is where we've kind of got a little bit of a crutch. Now, there were only really two choices. And I'll tell you why there were only really two choices. So Wits is out and... Uh, Nan Curvis is out, who's kind of a pod, probably wouldn't have picked him anyway. And then there's Darcy and English. Now, English is 650k, and Darcy was probably at his low and uh, had a low break even. He was about 530. Uh, and then there was Grundy. But the reason I don't think Grundy is a good pick was because we'd probably pick Grundy and then Gorn comes back and then Grundy becomes irrelevant again. So there was no point. Uh, and to me, it looked like the upside of Darcy at his price was better than the upside of English. And English somehow got to 139. He didn't touch the ball um, in the last five minutes of that game against Port in a losing game, and he went up 10 points. And the tap-outs he had went to opposition, where Darcy just seems to get absolutely scaled the shit out of for doing that. Meanwhile, uh, English keeps going up. Like, Bont was touching the ball and kicking it, and he was still getting... And getting up, you know, players. He was getting scaled back, and English wasn't even touching the ball and uh, was getting points. So, I don't know. One of those annoying things with GMB data, but three points, you take that for the price. And uh, it was good, good VC to captain off. Um, and Sammy Draper, I think, was the real surprise of this round. Um, you know, the guy was going up against Grundy, who's a great rough. Uh, and Melbourne, who were probably the best team in the comp, we thought, until maybe last round. And he went and got 103, which might be his highest score of the year. Uh, what did he get the round before? Did he get a 90 the round before? 109. So six points off last week, but that's two hundreds in a row from Draper. And this right can be set and forget for a little bit until maybe Gorn and some of the other boys get back. But, uh, I mean, like, English is probably the one we're going to get in. And I think that Darcy, if he can keep going, um, will be great as well. Oh, the other reason that Darcy was a good choice this week was he's playing Gold Coast with no wits, and Norwood Oval was the skinniest oval, like based on dimensions out of all the AF already AFL ovals there were. So it meant what we think was going to happen is he was going to get a lot of um, throw-ins, which meant more chances for hit-outs, and against an experienced Ruckman in Moyle, um, it seemed like a good spot to get him, and he did quite well, but he wasn't 140 and then got scaled back four points for God knows what reason. Meanwhile, English gets scaled up a point in the losing game where Darcy's game was a close win. I mean, I guess maybe there was other players around Darcy that got scaled up a bit, but it, 
Doesn't really make sense. Um, anyway, 136 was really nice. And the 103 from Draper against Grundy, which we probably didn't expect, was also very nice. Um, Zeebel and Sheezel just keep on keeping on. And they've both got defensive forward status now, which is nice. Um, but I don't think we'll be needing to move them yet. Uh, but the hundreds are good. Uh, Sheezel's a freak. He's having a better year than Dacos did last year, and uh, he could be that 500k player everyone wants in their team next year. Um, but for now, we'll just enjoy the highs. Uh, he did slow down a little bit, obviously. Um, I think he did get affected. He got... What did he get? He copped a knock in one of the quarter, uh, in the second quarter where he had to go off, um, which did slow him down a little bit. Uh, he had to get a bit of taping on his lower leg. Um, I think it was like a call to his car. Um, but he played through it. Hopefully he's not going to miss any time because you do find that players will play through the corks and then they'll get to the end of the week and it will get worse and they'll end up missing a game. But hopefully he keeps playing because he's got a lot of cash to make and he might just stay keeper for us here. Um, Tom Power looked like he was going to have a great game, gets to 30 in the first quarter like he does every week and then he just drops off. Which was annoying because I thought he might actually turn up because uh, he's well, he did turn up. He played a decent game, but like I thought he might get be able to put out a ninety, a hundred just because he was playing in front of his Adelaide crowd as a South Australian boy, and I thought he might want to turn it on, kind of like Draper did. Like Draper put on a show because he had so many people there. He, every he kick a goal and point to the crowd where they were sitting, and it was just great, great to watch. Um, Chandler gets a fifty six again. Don't really know how the bloke keeps doing it, but uh, he limps to a, limps to above average score off of not many. I think he actually had quite a few disposals this week, but um, I think like this 90 against Sydney was like over eight disposals, which was really annoying. Uh, he's got a really good run coming up with Richmond North and Gold Coast, so just keep him on and hopefully he kicks a few goals. Richmond looked pretty horrendous. North could actually be maybe the hardest out of these three for him to score against. Uh, but we'll see what happens anyway. Running Lear had another great game with an 88. He, for those guys who hold, held on to him, um, they're really enjoying this scoring from him. So, um, you know, 88 is a score you can bank from a rookie in. Uh, what's that, two in a row? Yep, two 88s in a row. So, um, yeah, you really like that, especially for his cash-making ability. Um, and then next, Fergus Green had another nice 70 score. So that's his second in a row above 70. And he looks like he's really firming in that role um, and uh, kind of figuring it out a little bit more. And we had Davey, who was managed by Essendon. And he was actually managed by Essendon and not just uh, pretended to be managed. And uh, Ryan, whose score could have been actually high 70s, 80s if he held a mark in the back line and then didn't get dragged for the last 10 minutes against Sydney. I don't think he was dragged. I think they just went, look, we can't have him on the field because it's a little bit wet. He just doesn't have those uh, hands to hold those marks he needs to yet. But he he looks like you get another 50 games into him and he could be a, a decent player for, for Richmond and maybe a decent key forward. But I think that Jack Rewalt showed on the weekend how good he is. And uh, Tom Papley just tore him apart in those last two quarters. So... Anyway, that's enough of the players today. So um, in the 3 2 one we'll do that now before we talk about a little bit of trade planning for this week. So at three, we're going Sean Darcy as the entrant. Um, couldn't have done any better. Got us the VC score. His average is up to 100 now, which is nice. Um, I think he's actually only had one bad score. What is it? 96 you'll take. 41. Horrible, but then 132, 125, 136. Now, you might say this was definitely an easy game. This actually wasn't, like, Rob's not that easy, and they actually lost, so that's quite a good score, the 125, and the 136 was another easy game. Um, it'll be interesting to see him against English, and I'm actually really liking this for maybe an English down game. Um, Darcy won't get him around the contest, but he might be able to rough him up in the... Uh, Ruck contest. So, like around the ball, English will win, but hopefully Darcy can just absolutely destroy him in the ruck. Um, I guess Oscar Mack isn't the best matchup after that, but then Hawthorne, Sydney, if 
I don't think he, he's going to be that. Those are going to be great matches for him because Hawks have young, experienced Rucks, and then Sydney had Laddams, who tends to let Rucks score quite well on him. And then Geelong, who also don't have a Ruck. 11th round, Melbourne gets hard again. And then after the bye, unless Richmond don't have... Uh, well, it might just be Mar uh, not Marich, Ivan Soldo or um, one of the other two guys. So this could be really good through here. Um, if he goes big against the Dogs, um, he could be back uh, because that would be a big scout. Uh, and then the two, Sammy Draper, I think that's just... Be that was this is so like obviously Dacos got a one twenty eight, but if we look at price and actual competition, I think the one hundred three was very, very, um, not, not telling, but it was uh, well, it came out of nowhere. Yeah, I didn't think I thought he scored seventy against Grundy or sixty against Grundy to be honest, and he played a huge game and uh, got us a one hundred, and you can't argue with that in this team. And last. I am picking Jimmy Warple over Hopper and Dacos. And the reason I'm picking Warple, price lower, but it actually kickstarted his cash gen again. Hopper already had good cash gen and everyone has Dacos. So I'm really happy that Warple's gone 100 and restarted that for us because um, we can hold him for a bit longer now. Um, it's going to be looking at recycling those guys out or at near the top who we don't think are going to get past that again and uh, bringing, in, uh, bringing in the players we need. If we go to history here, um, what can we see? Can we see trades here? Yeah, we can. The last week, what we decided to do was trade out Karen and Bruin. Now, I went Bruin over Power, even though Power was expected to lose money because Bruin was going to still be worth more and he wasn't playing. And I thought Power could at least put a better score than any rookie we might get. So I went with that. Sent to Ryan, which he did. So that's good. And uh, Kerno went out because he did have a high break-even. He did score an 86, but it didn't hit his break-even. So we're happy with that trade-out as well. And uh, that meant bringing in Darcy, who had a, who had a great score. And got himself up 40k, which is great money out to the team. <sighs> All right. So that's been a lot of talking, but uh, I like to talk. Um... If you aren't used to that yet, then get used to it because I talk a lot on this. We uh, we'll talk a lot on this team, a lot on Supercoach in general. Um, but let's go to list and uh, let's look at some um, break evens. So who have we got on high break even? So Lockie Hunter, Jacob Wiedering, Cam McKenzie, and Hinge is actually at quite a high break even now. That's I assume because his last score might have not been great. Oh, well. uh, no, I want. So, all right, so his last one is. Yeah, that 55 is in there. So if he can get through and get another 80, that's probably going to restart again. So we'll hold that. And he's got Wartle, which is actually a good matchup. So we'll keep that. Um, I just don't really know. Which one of these others? I think I'm going to keep Satterfield. Here's that day match sees players step up and there'll be no Zat Merritt. We're thinking because of that slink. Oh, I personally think that tackle is just a, it happens in footy tackle. Um, There was, there was a, th I guess you could say there was a thrusting motion, but it kind of seems like it was just body weight moving forward, trying to get him to the ground. And I know he hit his head, but there was no concussion. And what we're going to go on, you know, every act, as what the outcome could have been, because if we do that, then what happens with speckies where you knee someone in the back of the head, like, you know, outcome could be a concussion, but you're not getting done because it's legal. Um, yeah, not sure about that. I, I'm not sure about this whole, out, uh, well, not outcome, but, you know, potential to cause harm. Uh, I think it's a bit, it should be on based on action itself, not potential to cause harm. Because potential to cause harm could be proved off anything. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about what so we're going to trade. I'm going to keep Hunter. He's got Richmond. That's a good midfield matchup. So we'll keep Hunter. And he has a good run coming forward. So he might lose a little bit of money this week. We look at cash cows. What are we thinking? I reckon this will tell a different story. Um, 
the hunter might lose 17k which puts him back there but i think this can kind of catch up jimby looks like losing money but then gaining money you know if you are thinking of trading jimby maybe think about it before you do it because he could you know he comes out as a 90 next week then he's making quite a bit of money yet so old fire maybe on that one we got power who looks like losing a little bit gaining a little bit weedering is the one for me because i don't really like map the cash is maybe maxed out i think carlton gets to a little bit of a harder fixture now St Kilda should be hard, West Coast easy, but Brisbane's hard, Bulldogs will be hard, Colling will be hard, uh, Sydney will be hard, Melbourne will be hard. So I think it's time we can trade off on him. Uh, from there, wait, uh, the rest kind of making a little bit of money still. So we'll sit on these guys, and I'm thinking that Weedering will be the one out. So who is the question? So, there's a few options. And the midfield options are very interesting because Dawson is now midfield eligible, which is very tasty. Now, I, what I want to do is, can I filter? Can I filter from here? I cancel this. Cancel, please. If I go ahead and do this trade now. And now I've changed this twice uh, without putting in video. I'm sorry for that. Last week was a short week and I just didn't have time. Um, and I am sorry for that. But if it doesn't let me filter, which is what I want to. Why is it not letting me filter? Should it, should, I would have thought it would let me filter here. Um, just normally you wouldn't have all the teams here, I thought. Maybe if I reset this. I'll refresh it and we'll see what happens. Oh, there's enough of that. All right. Maybe it's just annoying. Anyway. Uh, so if we sub here. And if we look at. I actually kind of want to go Clary. Which would take us to 1.6. Which actually isn't as bad. He's just got such a good run. Does Clary have bad money coming up? I just think Clary's got such good run coming up that it's going to be a bad one to miss. What? I can't even search players. What am I doing wrong here? There's something I'm doing wrong. The highest price. So if we look at Clary... He's got a break even of 168, which means even with 129, he's going to lose 70 k And he will get, he will get a Look, look at his last balls against these teams. Richmond just don't have a midfield to go with him. Oh, 60 last week would have been good. Do we worry about money in this team? I think we do still. I think... So we got Laird, he's got Hawthorne, but then his run after that isn't great. He's got Collingwood Geelong. He, he's gone massive against Collingwood Geelong previously, though. Uh, and then we have Neil, who actually has a pretty good run. And then there's the guy I think I might actually bring in, being Took Miller. Um, Took's at the bottom of his probable drop in price. And uh, his run is really tasty coming up. What's he got now? 2% trading. So he's still probably seen that 40%. But he has North, Richmond, 
Melbourne be hard, but then West Coast. Uh, Brisbane in a match, uh, in a grudge match. Dogs, he could score fairly well against. And then Adelaide, Carlton, Hawthorne. And Carlton show that their midfield can't even match it. And maybe Adelaide's actually a hard one. Two games in Darwin. Ugh. I know Gold Coast are an expansion team, but we don't have to shut up them like that. Jesus. Uh, in the de defense, there's actually quite a bit of value. Uh, Sarong, he would have been nice if we could have started with him. Anderson's looking all right. Uh, where are we? I just had a good game. Gordon's actually going down in money, which is interesting. Uh, Cogs is going down in money. He's a one week time. Grab that cash. Because. This is going to be right back. Well, I think a lot of people are going to go Cogs this week. They could drop another stinky against the Lions, if I'm honest. LDU slowed down a little bit. I don't even think that they put that much pressure on him. Uh, Quantum Pelly is here. Ooh, I like the Frio matchup. And Hawthorne GWS. All right. We are picking the Bont. <laughs> the Bont is definitely coming in. These next three matchups are tasty. And uh, I think that's going to be the only trade this week. So in comes the Bont as our first midfielder, which looks really nice. Um, and I think Collingwood have quite a good matchup this round as well. So the Dogs have, and that gives us a first round DC, which looks nice. And then Dacos is the last game of the round. so. That lets us uh, loophole with anyone, which is nice. Actually, and Essendon play last as well, which means we can literally loophole up to the last minute, which is really nice. Although GWS play the thing, so maybe not as nice as we think. Uh -oh. Yeah, I like that. I like the bomb. Uh, Although McRae is actually there as well, which could be, but I don't really trust his role. Um, but he's got the Rio, who aren't as good as they were last year, so you expect a better score. And are they playing at no, they're playing at Optus, but I think we can expect a better score there. Hawthorne, those are a lovely last three. And Hawthorne are not as good as they used to be. And then GWS, who are also probably going to have issues as well, and it's a big grudge match from 2016 where uh, the Dogs ended up winning the Premiership. And uh, that would be when, what, uh, what's his name? Who was the full forward who played for GWS? Tom Boyd swapped over to uh, the Bulldogs. Great grudge match always. And then even after that, like, Carlton, not that great. Oh, this is just a lovely next six. Really nice next six. We really like that from the Bond. So um, I think definitely getting him in is going to be good. But anyway, um. Once again, that's the round two review. We're on the way to 50K um, and in the right direction. Uh, we're getting rid of players that are scoring a little bit low. We're getting players like if we had Bont last week, that's an extra 80 points, probably up to 2,100 nearly. So, um, And I think we'll start climbing quite quick as players start to drop off throughout the season. There'll be some that just get over it. I know with my actual team, I'm nearly over it, especially with that Cam McKenzie sub that I didn't realize was going to be subbed till later on. But that's uh, a whole different issue. But anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I know I ramble a lot, but um, I just love talking footy and love talking about the players. So, um, and I'm talking super coach. So that is why I ramble a bit. But um, Bontepel is now in. Um, the only other thing I'm thinking is maybe dropping power and picking up one of these rookies that are expected to go up quite a bit. Um, so practically, yeah, look at that, 41K expectation. That's great for those owners. Mitch Allen's still got a great... Oh, yeah. You start Mitch Allen's and you're getting great scoring and awesome price rise. What did he get last round? 84. That's still good. You take that. Now, Dylan Williams could be the one. If he gets a game, West Coast, that's a very tasty matchup, and I might actually bring him in. And then we've got... Outside of that, there's not much else is there. 
Uh, but it is starting to spread the forward line a bit there. Getting all these rooks. Uh, but you got to spend money to make money in this game. Uh, Will Phillips, we should have brought him in. He is going to make probably 200-ish. Maybe 250. He had... I mean, he did have a shoulder issue, though. So that is something to think about. But he... Got a 74 in a game where he got half an injury and uh, 97k in two games is really nice. Um, but anyway, I'll have a think about this. I think if Dylan Williams gets a name, we might go him just because uh, Port play West Coast and then they have not too bad matchups after that. Even all the way up to round 13, they're quite good. So, so I mean, Melbourne's hard, but it's Adelaide Oval, so that's helpful. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you stuck around this long, that's great. Give us a subscribe because it is free to subscribe, guys. Um, and I should start saying to subscribe more throughout the video um, because no one gets to the end of this video. If you get to the end of this video, leave a comment and let me know. Um, but otherwise, it's just the rambles of a uh, maybe a coach challenges who's happy with the score this week. Um, you can, as I can see, the rank rising is going to be a little bit slower than what we um, first would have liked. But, you know, 50k is still there. 1,200 points behind. Hopefully, by the time uh, we get to the buys, we're not too far behind. Maybe I should make it round 10 next year. But for now, uh, did I make it round 10 this year? I think I did. I'll have to check. I'll have to check. I think it was the buys. Uh, but if it was round 10, that would be good because... Uh, we're only going to lose maybe another 500 points over the next five rounds, five, 600 points. And uh, we could get those, start getting those quickly if injuries start taking toll. And uh, the way that, uh, the way that there are uh, getting players from tackles and bumps, you know, any player could go for a few weeks pretty quickly. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.